The grade cricketer is a Twitter stream. It's about playing crickets at the grade level. Boys! Get a few today, did you? To be honest with you, I um, hate grade cricket. <laughs> uh, I went into to play for a team called um, oh, the Nemes Kid. Obviously, sharing's always a big issue, a big issue for, for young kids coming into a senior cricket team. I was like a wizard, please. Um, a bit of advice for the players yeah. follow up. I refer to the great cricketer here and I'll say, this will do a little bit early. <laughs> India bounced back from Adelaide thanks to 100 from Jinx Rahane. And the man with a more rubbery arm than a fourth grader being tempted at by a Friday night circuit, Jasper Boomer. The nation is in panic as Smith is officially out of form and Joe Burns has probably lost his job. But how many times can a man get out in the space of 10 balls? Net footage of Warner running twos and the nets appear online. So will these 18 test hundreds at home start to mean something soon? There's BBL thrillers, Kane Williamson tons, Faf Daddy hundreds and rigs. Height based mm. selections. And we question the balance of the ICC teams of the decade for matches that they're not actually playing. Josh Layla is on the show to tell us what Pat Cummins is really like playing for five BBL clubs and Caribbean Premier League circuits. Captain of the West Indies, Jason Holder, is on the show to tell us which grade player is asking for free kit and the conversations he didn't need to have with Ben Stokes in the IPL. Hashtag Ask TDC asks about new sticks, old sticks, infidelity, and greatest ever regrets. This episode's brought to you by Budgie Smuggler. We can get... All of your gifts, your accessories, it's not too late. Start your 2021 right now at budgiesmuggler.com. You can also check out Patreon at patreon.com forward slash Craig Cricket for more exclusive content every single week. My name is Ian Higgins, Sam Perry. Happy Christmas. Merry New Year to you. And um, and how are you? <laughs> <laughs> Man, I'm good. I'm good, yeah, in those uh, kind of hazy, lazy days of summer where you don't know what day yes. it is. Indeed. And, um, yeah, just waking up and watching Australia suck. Yeah, oh, yeah, so now Australia sucks again, right? Yeah. Yeah, we suck. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> still, still. Best bowling quartet of all time a few days ago. <laughs> yeah. Um, but as, as, this is, as this is peak backyard season, you know, Christmas time, you know, Boxing Day with your mates, yeah. you know, family Christmas yeah. Day. Everyone's out there in the backyard for the last few summers before we can't go outside anymore because it's too hot. Hmm. Although it was cold in South West Sydney as we saw. The other day. As Mark Latham tweeted, right? Where are the articles about that? I want to know. I want to know if you got a backyard cricket memory off the top of your head, a specific cricket backyard memory oh, off the top of my head. Well, the backyard was a place of worship for me. I spent a lot of time out there. Massive cliche, but I'm a white bloke, middle class bloke, so I am a cliche. Yep. Uh, yeah, countless hours with my dad mm. out there. Uh, I'd wait for him to come home. He'd dutifully bowl to me, often in his suit. Mm-hmm. Not because he, just because he wanted to actually impersonate Fred the Demon Spoffer in his tie. <laughs> he, hadn't come home, he hadn't come home from work. No, no, no. Are oh, you going to play in the backyard? Let me just pop my suit on. Um, I have overwhelmingly happy memories from the backyard, mm. but um, I was nice. also a you know a child and, and remain one of like you know sure. white hot emotion if things go wrong <laughs> for me, and they did. And um, there was one day where so my dad's from a big Catholic family. Mm. Uh, he's the eldest of seven, and there's five boys, and so. Like the day where, like the days where, like all my uncles would come over and we'd play, not the aunties. Mm. Um, mm. I, I would be so excited, you know, and I was like a budding cricketer, and and mm. so I'd be outside and like you know Stephen Bidolf of, of manhood fame, you know, mm. said you know there are not, not many rituals in like Western male society, but backyard cricket can be a ritual where you learn, mm-hmm. uh, you know, accept the umpire's decision, deal with your emotions, mm. etc. And mm. I just remember my uncles bowling at me and like. Uh, I was given out, caught behind, and I've just I've not hit it. I've I, st- I can actually still feel the plastic bat swinging yeah. on the unmown yeah. grass. Well, um, and the ewing and the yahooing and the yeah. laughing and the um, like admonishment uh, at me throwing the bat again, mm-hmm. and you know needing mm-hmm. to accept the decision. Mm. That, that's a that's a memory off the top of my head. Well, that's that's what's happened. That's what's happened to Tim Payne. I mean, Tim Payne's played missed. <laughs> he, nearly, he nearly went there, didn't he? <laughs> yeah. And then, you know, Rashad Pant, and the, mm. you know, behind him is just mm. ewing and yahooing. Mm. Um, and yourself? My backyard cricket yeah. memories. Got some um, – my mate had a great, like, tiled area uh, oh, yeah. in, in his backyard. Uh, well, it wasn't his backyard because um, mm. we Your were – parents made him feel like it was. That's right. Yeah. And, and myself as a guest mm. uh, before I turned 15, gone to his dad's Crown Lagers. Mm. Uh, <laughs> never, never been drinking them again. Yeah. Um, and uh, so what you'd have to do, of course, was you'd get that tennis ball as wet as fuck, yep. and you'd then you'd water the surface as well, yep. and you just bowl and bounces. Yep. And you're just trying to hit people then, of course. and then that became funnier the older you got. 
um, because you can be a little bit stronger. So there's yeah. more velocity behind it. And with and, tiles, I presume there's a few grooves in the tiles, so sometimes you get some variable. A little bit, yeah, a little bit. Yeah, we did quite a bit of damage to that household in hindsight. Um, but this is this is pre Wanger days as well, so mm. you couldn't you couldn't really wind up with a Wanger. That actually would be quite fun now. Oh, that would be wanger. fun. Use, yeah, learn how to use and a put on like a, yeah, he's in a slip and slide kind of thing. Mm. But my mate tried and played a hook shot into like fucking eight houses down, slipped yeah. over, and yeah, cracked his head. Nice. Yeah, yeah. Um, it's been five years actually since. Yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> Pez, uh, <laughs> Australia are about to lose the second Test match. Yeah, we're recording it on the what day is it? Day four. Yeah, India need like ten to win. Okay, well that's okay. So we, yeah, if we haven't reported straight, yeah. remarkable. Yeah, and and Travis Head's double mm. hat trick, following <laughs> his office should have been earlier in my opinion. Mm. Um, where to start with? I want to start with the Rahane hundred because yeah. Sunil Gavaskar said, uh, I haven't got the exact quote in front of me, but he said words to the effect of it was the most important hundred in the history of Indian cricket. That's how that's how his hundred will be remembered. Fucking mm. hell, big rap, mm. big rap, good hundred to be fair. Well, yeah, I mean, the context is everything, isn't it? They got rolled for 36, Coley's gone. Uh, and, mm. you know, when you're in Australia, no La Nina means, you know, if there was no La Nina, then it'd be 40 degrees. So you right. can add that into the context of it as well. Mm-hmm. They get rolled for 36 against <laughs> yeah. the, the best bowling quartet the country's ever produced. Mm-hmm. Um, that was last week, though. That was last week. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that's right. It wasn't the last thing. No. Yeah, no Coley, uh, new captain. Pretty good. Uh, to, uh, you know, to, to come out, especially yeah. after they rolled Australia for 195 mm. on – Pretty good pitch, and you have to hand it the MCG. First time seeing that for a very long time, but very good wicket. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know it, that where where Aussies couldn't score runs, and then your top order sort of flayed a little bit as well mm. to come out and hit a hundred odd. Uh, pretty um, pretty good result. You know, I was thinking about that comment. That I was kind of thinking of like what's India's like who's India's biggest rival? Obviously Pakistan, right? And I wonder if like their their international series they haven't actually played each, against each other in ages. That's how good the rivalry. That's is. how good the rivalry yeah. is. They've really thinned it's it out. Actually, the opposite of the Ashes yeah. played five in two years last year, um, and so like that rivalry's gone. So then of course, and there's only three teams that play Test cricket now, despite the yeah. six teams playing at the moment. Did, um, but th- this must be like probably the biggest series for them, Australia away. They they're probably there might not be a bigger series for yeah. India. And, and that's the other thing, because there's only three teams that play mm. as well, mm. and everyone like mucks their conditions around so much. Away cricket, like mm. your results away, mm. is kind of what stands you in. Like that's the path to greatness for all cricketers. Like yeah. we, so Australia's playing India, who's ostensibly the number one team in the world, but we still expect to smash them because we're at home. We're in home comforts. Yeah. Uh, except we don't have flat dead wickets anymore. Can we bring them back, please? Get now? them on the fucking yeah. gabber, I say. Yeah. Well, let's see. So <laughs> if we ever get there, whenever you do anything right. away, it, it yeah. kind of. Carries double weight. Well, it's interesting because India have sucked away. Like at the beginning of this year, New Zealand fucking pumped them mm. in the tests. Um, so they, they have struggled away, but then they were here two years ago and everyone thought, well, without Smith and Warner, mm. did it really count? Exactly. And it did count, it turns out, because it's pretty much the same conditions. They've pretty much got the same bowlers. In fact, they've actually got lesser bowlers. In this second test, they've basically bowled Australia out with one less bowler in yeah. there. In their um, yeah, in the actual they've, match, they've done it while and that's losing without, a bowler. That's without Shami and Shami. Mm. Um, mm. Pretty good. Now, Bumrah, fuck Can I just me. Say, just on Rahana's okay. hundreds, well, uh, Siddhartha Vana, I can't say it, Vana Ya Nathan. Sorry, it's on Twitter. Mm-hmm. He called it uh, Rahana's hundred is an unyoutubable innings. Oh yeah, the last minute softening of the grip, the glides past gully, the quick running, mm. the cat and mouse v line, the unflappability. Mm. Refocusing after the breaks. These are beyond highlights. Mm. We're privileged to have watched this gem. That's why it was a good inning, though, from Test Cricket perspective. It wasn't just fucking boom, crash. That sounded good off the willow. Mm. Mm. It was just subtle. It I watched nice. it on YouTube, though. Yeah. So mm. he's wrong about that. But was it highlights or did you watch full innings? You no, watched just, a nice little clip up just, from just, BCCI. <laughs> just yeah. clip ups. Well, he's wrong, said I. Just streams. <laughs> I'll be jumping to comment on that. Yeah. Um, mate, Boomer. Fuck me. What a king. king. Yeah, he's he's king. king. Boomer is king. I can't remember a bowler. I was saying this yesterday. Now, there's been great bowlers that come out here. You said Rabada, you know, Stain Morkel, mm. you know, it'd be interesting to see how Archer goes here next year. That's really yeah. exciting. But no, I know England won here like 10 ish years ago, but mm. the, the, that, the batting won that series. You know, I, I, I can't think of a time except for maybe the, the Windies, the like yeah. Windies in the 90s, where like Australia fucking can't, they can't hit this bloke. They can't hit him. And mate, even in the fourth innings, and obviously, you know, second and fourth innings runs uh, don't count as much, but like they India don't. have got guys against the best quartet of all time uh, mm. in Australia, that mm. is. Uh, just getting on the front dog or pulling. Mm. No one, ain't, no one's doing that to Boomerah. No. No one's front dogging him. No. No one's front dogging that wanger of an arm. Mate, they can't or, pick, or pulling it. Mate, they can't pick up the cunt. Mate. It's fucking, <laughs> it's like, can you imagine like, 
it's it's cliche now because he's obviously got an unusual run up. Therefore, yeah. it's weird. You don't trust it. But but you know when there's a bowler, I think it's a similar thing with Archer. He like jogging in, or even they used to say about Michael Holly had this really fluid run up, and he got yeah. to the crease and was like, Phew. yeah, you know. And and Boomer must be like, it's fucking, it's a it's a speech impediment of a run up. It's stuttering. <laughs> it's it's starting, and then the arm is just everywhere, mate. The arms everywhere, the knees straight, yeah. the arms everywhere. I don't know what's going on. Yeah. How are you supposed to? Adjust for that because yeah. he used to it's coming from like eleven o'clock as well. Yeah, the seams all weird. Sometimes it can go, you know, it goes away, away. Then you just yeah. get this dagger in swinger. Yeah. It's like round the wicket in, uh, round the wicket in swinging Yorkers to right handers. <laughs> pretty so good. It was pretty good. Yeah, pretty good. Yeah, eh? no, he's 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 amazing. I thought it was interesting the way India have bowled in the game that they seem to have bowled a lot straighter. And I was just saying this before. Mm. I, I, I still feel like Australia who have. You know, they, these wickets are fantastic because they're really exciting because they're lower scoring. But they are a little bit slower. It's got a nice carry to them. They're a little bit slower. And I wonder if Australia's buying just maybe that, a little bit outside off stump more, still playing for Knicks, but allowing like some some width in the uh, for shots for India yeah. to play. Australia's Australia playing cricket for like fast, bouncy wickets. Right. And India's playing, they're playing fucking square leg, two mid wickets and a mid on, bolt mm. stumps, and you just can't hit it. Like, we just can't get off the strike. Well, no, we're going to. I mean, it's, it's X is known as cast now, but uh, and we're going to come to Smith in a second. But like, p- part of Australia's issue is that like, you know, we've we've worshipped at the altar of off bail our whole lives. Everything's yes. been about off bail. The altar of off. It is, and you've got you've got a little bit of a um, a, a, you know, a little uh, mounting of off bail as I walk into your house. Yes. We do worship at it. It's a shrine. When I walk in, off bail, a shrine of the off bail. Yeah, and your entire technique, our entire philosophy and culture is um, built around off bail and the protection of. Mate, I'm on my knees for the protection of off bail. That's right. And India's come here, like in Boomer's bowling in swingers from uh, an outswingers from eleven o'clock. Yeah. Ashwin comes in straight. He's not. He's not like line coming from outside off spinning no. in. He comes in straight. He's got variations on themes of balls that are just pitching on middle. Which way is it going? How fast is it? That Mate. one's ninety k. That one's eighty. We're sort of you know poking. Around. No one. Everyone's so scared to hit Ashwin over his head. Like that's yeah. what we do to offies. We go, yeah. Mate, come in and bowl. I'll pump you over your head a few times, and you're going to be scared. Put a few men out. Now we're all going to score hundreds. No one's getting on the front dog to Ashwin either. It's like, oh, I'm back foot. Yeah. I can miss getting bowled off leg stump we're, because yeah. we worship the altar off bail. Yes. And India's not bowling at off bail at all. Nothing, yes. They've got nothing to do with off nothing bail. Nothing to do with off bail. They don't want anything to do with it. Do except it. when Burns is batting. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> that's, 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 yeah. But just bowl it off bail to him. To be fair, just get it down there, guys. Yeah. <laughs> just get it down the other no, end. No, they're, they're all at sea. I think, I think they've been exposed, the Aussie batters, and I think a lot of it is to do with us being very used to scoring runs on flat, dead wickets. Yes. There's a little bit in it, and yes. uh, the techniques are not precise enough. They don't have plans B, C, D. Now, Paz, as you know, we, mm. we worship at the altar of off-bail, mm. but that's in the Abbey of Convention. Yes. And you think of, like, Hazelwood's just not just yeah. – you, you could set your watch to Hazelwood's action, just oh, yeah. nice and high. Yeah, you like just it. Just get it through, you know, lion, just fucking mm. just beautiful mm. through there. Like Ashwin's flicking them down there. He's yep. bowling some leg spinners if he wants to. Boomer's bowling from cover. Yeah. Like, and – we're just like in this Anglo world of like, what the fuck's this shit? Yeah. This, this isn't convention. This ain't convention, brother. And we've been asking for 10, 20 years for us to start serving up some wickets that has a bit of sport in them. Yeah. Where, you know, that provides, <laughs> that provides a yeah. few options. Yeah. And now we're like, no, no, let's go back to the let's flat stuff. Let's go stuff. back to the flat some flatties. Yeah. <laughs> Please. Fast and flat. Please. Give us some fast and flat. Mate, we haven't scored. N- no one's scored a 50 against India for like, in three years apart from Burns. Burns got the only 50. Mate, <laughs> this yeah. series for Australia. <laughs> he's and he's the worst <laughs> bat. Four day chess and tell yeah. him that. Now give him another game. Let's yeah. keep him in there. No, no, the who looks like I mean to win a test match? Yeah, somebody has to play a match winning innings with the bat. Famously, uh, famously so. Mm. None of the six that are in there look close mm. to a hundred. Mm. They don't look close. No. Channel Seven put up a stat. I saw this on the internet um, that uh, the top in the last two series, the top scores in those two series. There's like there's nine Indian names yeah. of about six different bats. And then Marcus Harris was seventy nine. He's the highest top. He's the highest score that mm. Australia's got in now six tests. It's a pattern, and he ain't even playing. Their, their bowlers are better than our batters in our conditions. Yeah. It's definitely cause for concern. Yeah. And you know what? The the thirty six is an anomaly. Like India dominated their first two days, so th- there's a pattern this mm. series as well. Mm. Uh, and a lot of our batters have been um, hiding beneath, like hiding underneath Smith's runs. He hasn't got them at the moment. He's allowed to have some. Issues and he fucking looks like he's got some <laughs> as well. Yeah. Uh, Has so, done for a while, but now yeah. it's like any runs. So it'll be really interesting to see if Langer uh, says, "Well, let's put some fresh guys in the team mm. who may be able to play against these guys," or if we should just work hard in the nets. <laughs> 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 just a bit of chemistry. Mate, it, doesn't, really. it doesn't seem like we wanted enough. Yeah, and we wanted enough. Yeah. Well, it's good to see Dave Warner running in the nets. That just gives us hope, doesn't it? 
Mate, the amount of people we sent, pff, Warner only does, only does it at home. Fuck, we'd kill for some home runs now, wouldn't we? We'd Mate, kill for some home runs he's now. A worldie. Yeah. <laughs> he's a uh, worldie. Well, I mean, when it comes to, like, Warner's an all-time great when it comes to home records. We've lost an all-time great. I'm just hanging yeah. on to this. I mean, we're Australians. We need an excuse. We need something that we have not been able to control yeah. as a reason. India are missing five of yeah. their top, <laughs> top right. players. Yeah, they're missing Coley. <laughs> no, no, forget that. Yeah. Uh, Ro- Ro- Rohit Sharma. Um, and then three bowlers, yeah. Yeah. Oh, well. Um, Australia dropped heaps of catches, man. That doesn't usually happen. And I wonder if the, I wonder if this game, that was probably the deciding factor. Like, and, and also, that also might have been a deciding factor in the first test. I mean, they dropped Labuschagne three times in Adelaide. Australia dropped six catches, I think, uh, in this match. And, you know, it seems to me, if I can coin a phrase here, catches right. win games of cricket. Yes, and it rolls off the tongue. Like it does roll too. off the tongue. Yeah. It does roll off the tongue. Oh well, I mean, it, it, it's all it's all, all of that stuff is symbiotic, isn't it? I you guess know? so. Warren can't you know uh, start the game at a high tempo, and Australia's entire cricketing uh, philosophy falls away. Yeah, that's right. It means we can't take catches anymore. Um, let's talk about Joe Burns, man. Okay. Um, now that his second innings, four or one or whatever he got, where he faced ten balls, mm-hmm. were some of the most enjoyable cricket I've seen. But fuck, I felt the pain. I felt so. I felt so bad for him. I felt bad for him because um, it wasn't the manner that he got out for a low score. No, sorry, it was the manner that he got out for the low score. It wasn't the low score itself. It was that he was out several times before. Yeah. He was just he faced ten balls and he was nearly out five times. Yeah, in ten balls, and then at various points he was sitting on his bum. <laughs> yeah, with his like like he, he not with his bat in his hand. Yeah, exactly. Sitting up like a child, like a prone child. Yeah, with exactly. His leg, with his legs extended. Like if someone showed you a picture before you went out to bat, it's like at some point in the game. <laughs> In your innings, you're going to be sitting like this. Like, that's what the game's going to do to you. We all know what that feels like. There's yeah. another one when Smith got out. Like, it was just a still image of him yeah. after he's out. It's like, he's three metres outside leg stump. Why? Yeah. How'd you end up there, mate? <laughs> and Lee Bales just flicked yeah, off. Lee Bales off. Yeah. Uh, yeah, you can't kick a man when he's down. He's, There's no he's, need to. I mean, you know, I, 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 do, I feel sorry for him as well because he's, he's out of form. He's always been a um, like a serviceable play for Australia, and yeah. he's playing against a couple of worldies. I mean, yeah. the recipe is just uh, yeah. catastrophic for him, yeah. and it just turns out that Smith isn't scoring runs that everyone can hide behind as well. Yeah, so, that uh, does hurt him. It'll be interesting to see whether they go with. I mean, he's got to go now. He must. Yeah, but he, like must. It'd, it'd, he must. It'd, it'd be interesting to see whether they go with Harris or whether Perkovsky is an option for Man, them. It's got to be real sad for Burns, who's who has to finish the game. There's still like he has to go with two more days of Test cricket. And all the anxiety and the stress of that he's feeling right now, knowing he must know that like that's he's out of the team for a while. Sure, people have been like, "Well, he'll never play again." That's that's pretty ridiculous. Because mm. um, if he scores heaps of runs again, he'll probably come back into contention. But but it, it must be weird when this isn't just a game of cricket they play on Saturday. We're just like, "Oh, I failed again at the end of the season." This is mm. like this is his entire job. This is his livelihood. It's mm. like it ain't. There's nothing funny about it in that in that capacity, mm. but um, but his innings was funny to be fair. Yeah, well, and and, and in time, like with all comedy, has tragedy plus time. <laughs> tragedy in time, plus he'll time. find it funny too. He'll find it funny. We'll you get know? him on the show. He'll find it funny when he yeah, he, yeah. eventually. Probably not next week. Yeah, <laughs> probably not. Do you next think week. Ponting finds it funny when he was knocked over like literally on his face by Callis? Probably not. Probably now. Probably proud. You think so? He, he, he's sitting there laughing. One way to find out. <laughs> <laughs> Is this funny to you, mate? Yeah. yeah. Um, so Smith is officially out of form now because he missed a ball that he never misses. He yeah. got bowled leg stump. Yeah. That doesn't happen to Steve Smith. And, and, and like Smith is so unorthodox that mm. we don't know what problem he has to solve mm. again, because of our incessant worship at the, at, at the altar of off bail. Mm. Um, he, he's a leg, he's a leg bail guy. They mm. just seem to be kind of choking him on the leg side, mm. putting all their fielders there. Mm. Uh, and then when Ashwin bowls, he can't pick it and doesn't know what to do. So he has to kind of get himself out of that. Is this our fault? Cause when we, when he had the show a couple of weeks ago, we said, maybe they should just bowl on your legs. And he's like, yeah, maybe they should do that. Now yeah. they have done that. Yeah. And he, he's got 10 runs for the series. Yeah. Well, anyway, well, he keep his place. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> hey, mate, what's going on with Travis Head? Well, what do you? I mean, I, I don't know. There's two schools of thought on Head. You know, is mm. it is he long term? He's kind of like a long term investment. He still has that kind of project play of feel to him, Travis Head. He's 27. Mark Taylor said he needs to be scoring 150s now. Yeah. Uh, on the other hand, you could say, well, he was still in. You know, it was still sort of 17 and 38 mm. in this mm. game. He was mm. involved in the biggest partnership. He mm. sort of dug him out of a, a little bit of a hole. But then the other school is, you know, Ricky Ponting says he's still. 
you know, is concerned about the manner and the patterns with which he gets dismissed of getting caught uh, wafting outside off stump. Does that say something about his concentration, all that sort of stuff? Is, is, is he the guy? Is, you know, you bat five at, for Australia. That's that's big boy runs that's at the end of the day. That, that's like if you, you're you going to bat five for Australia and you're 27, you're a big boy. It's big boy shit. When are we expecting some big boy behavior? It's interesting with Head because he still averages 40, which is good in test cricket. Funny how he averages 40 without winning many matches for Australia, yeah. isn't it? But 40, it's, it's but, maths. So. But, you know, in, in the same way that if you're playing, let's play. Let's say you're playing first grade, right? Okay. And you're getting 30. You hit 30. That doesn't say that you're not good enough for the level. That says it's a concentration issue. So I can imagine for the Australian players, the Australian setup, right? They, 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 must, they must be thinking, we've got a guy who's young enough, 27. He's got leadership mm. potential. Um and he's averages 40 in test cricket, so he's good enough, but he's not scoring the fucking match-winning runs, right? That's that's the issue that they've yeah. got. But then who are you replacing him with? There's no one in like Shield Cricket who at the moment is overwhelmingly a, a better candidate. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. I think there's a lot of things like, just get rid. Well, Someone's got to come in who's better than him. It's funny you say that, actually, because it, it would be... Yeah, tempting to say, well, is there someone else who hasn't been kind of uh, psychologically damaged by Boomer and Ashwin who may, be, who may have the technique to play them to mm. to help win this series? Is it, you know, Enriquez is in the side at the yeah. moment, he's in the squad. Does he have the experience to do it? Has he got a game plan that might be able to work for a bit of a one-off, um, you know, Band-Aid mm. solution? Mm-hmm. But mm-hmm. if you were to get rid of Head, again, which would be tempting – simultaneously you think, well, look at all the other players who've systemically been gotten rid of over time who are now kind of nowhere. Mm. Uh, what's happened to Matt Renshaw's game um, mm. a long time ago? I mean, I'm thinking more broadly here. What happened, you know, we know we sort of saw what happened to Peter Hanscom. What about Nick Maddinson? Where's he? Mm. Curtis Patterson got injured, couldn't score. All these guys mm. went out of the side, mm. couldn't score runs immediately after they came back, and now they don't seem near the team, mm. nor is there any first-class cricket for those guys to score runs in. Mm. And now we have this question of, well, where, who do we bring in? Uh, who's next cab? Mm. Um, and that's the danger of actually of dropping guys, is that there's this system in Australian cricket now where – the guys who are dropped can't start banging that door down again or getting more cricket into them. They're playing BBL, so they actually feel further away from the team. Mm. So why would you risk that with Travis Head, who they've invested so much in and does look like he might be able to do it? Maybe he won't. You drop him, what happens to him? Do you lose him for a few years? It's a risk mm. with the way cricket's set up at the moment. Mm. I think it's as much a reason as any to stick with him, uh, even though that's not that's not ideal. Well, how many sixes does Ollie Davies need to hit? That's a good point. Or the Thunder. That's a really good point. Or Philippe, all that sort of Yeah, it's it looks clean good balls. Yeah, it's clean, clean balls, yeah. yeah. Let them wear pink in the test if you need. Good point. If you need. Um, what happens next, Jack? Well, in terms of the test match, we still don't know. There was supposed to be an announcement this morning about where the fuck this thing even is. Yeah, this thing even is. Yeah. It's supposed to be in Sydney, right, for yeah. the overseas listings. It's supposed to be the pink yeah. test, the Joe McGrath day, day three. Uh, it's supposed to be the Sydney test, New Year's test, a little bit later this year. Um, well, they've said on about three or four separate occasions in the last few days that we'd have an announcement at X day on X time, and mm. each time it gets getting pushed and back also from been, as early as this there's morning. There's also been two today. There's yeah. been two times given today of which yeah. there is still no thing, and you're checking yeah. the internet now. I'm checking the internet now because undoubtedly that decision will have been made when people listen, and we don't know what it is <laughs> yeah, right now. Yeah. So get your tickets. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> um, I, I, don't, I don't think... Um, I don't think Australia is in that bad a place. I think we just lost one test. Doesn't usually happen. We're still getting used to losing games. There's been, there's, there's some worrying signs about yeah. the batting, but I still think that Australia's still a pretty good team. The, yeah, the, what, and the bowling's good. And if it turns out that what we're learning is that India is the best team in the world, not Fine. us. Yeah, well, pretty yeah. good team. Pretty good team. Mate. We just learned they're a good team. Yeah, and like are Australia better than most of the other teams? Yeah. So there you go. Yeah. And we're like, oh well, but Warner and Smith get most of our runs. That's what happens in most cricket top orders. Yeah. There's two or three guys to get heaps guys. and some guys yeah. get as many. We're just, we're just not used to cricket in Australia where we don't just dictate terms with everybody averaging 50 and bowling 140s. <laughs> That's exactly it. When, like, when we talked about this the other day, like we're talking about um, imagine having a guy, like we're talking Travis Head, they average just 40. Imagine yeah. playing cricket as a guy on your team who averages 40. Yeah. Fuck that, it'd be good. Yeah. That must be so good. It's like, oh, mate, Head's absolutely nowhere. It's like, well, 38, you pretty much saved the first innings. <laughs> I did enough, you know. Yeah. 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 Mate, yeah. it's a series. It's a fucking series. Before, mate, and it's mm. amazing. Like before, you know, because the last thing that happens is the yeah, next yeah, yeah. thing that will happen. India's Except gone. Except yeah, exactly. Yeah. Like, India's gone. Fucking chamois <laughs> forearm gone. They're psychologically broken. Yeah, no, Coley. Cool, cool, these blokes. Coley's, Coley's fucked off. To, you know, yeah, to be with his family. Off, he doesn't yeah. want to be here. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> 
three or, three or four days later, you know, Hazel just looks a bit benign. You know, yeah. how are they getting on the front dog to him? <laughs> it's just a good series. Yeah, we wanted good. them to – they've evened it up. We don't know where the next game is as we go yeah. to where. There's one at the end at the Gabba. It's fucking good cricket. Yeah. It's really good cricket. Who knows how Australia can, Mate, you know, Australia can bounce back. Do you remember the, the 05 Ashes when Australia just won everything and then it came to the 05 Ashes and then it was like, we've got a series here and people were like, no depth in Australian cricket. Exactly. McGrath's out. Yeah, Fuck, what are we doing right. now? Cadditch at six. Yeah. <laughs> when the thoughts so. are. Invest in the AIS again. <laughs> Where's the academy? Rod Marsh there? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Hey, yeah. India's um, good. India's good. <clears throat> um, mate, the ICC team of the decade. Oh, uh, you would have really, Now we're talking. You were really, really tucked into some of this gear here. <laughs> Fuck the. I mean, who ca- okay, who cares about the teams? Yeah, some names. They're all good players. They're all really good. Yeah. I looked at it. I was like, that's a good team. It's a good team, mate. <laughs> <laughs> They'll fucking whack Mars. Yeah. Or whoever the fuck they're playing against. I, I opened Twitter, as is my want. Yes. If I could borrow one of your phrases. Please. And uh, I didn't know this was coming or anything. I didn't know it was hanging out for <laughs> it. <or anything laughs> it like yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, as the team just looked at the... It, looked it, wasn't, like, the, it wasn't the group WhatsApp cool. refresh. Has it come up yet? He's a good player. He's a good player. Yeah. yeah. And like, but like, you know, just waiting to open the comments <laughs> so people could bit. pick the holes in it. <laughs> yeah. It's yeah. like, well, Sankara hasn't kept since 08. <laughs> ah, I reckon he'll do a good enough job. <laughs> if you gave him the gloves in that team. Yeah, I'd still ke- I'd still have him. You know, yeah, even if he hasn't kept for a while. Nah, that's like broad and ass, nothing to bowl. Where, where are we playing here? Yeah, is that where, where, where was this in Australia? Yeah, oh, okay. With the cooker bar, I don't think so. Well, that is the weakness in the side for, like, for me. Like Stain's carrying a big load there for Broad Anderson. Oh, it's a fucking yeah. disgrace yeah. that they picked. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that was my comment. I think Ashwin's looked benign in various. Yeah, years exactly. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> is it deuce or legal? Is it, what's mm. happening to that? He used to do that sort of stop and prop ball as well. So I don't have to do that. I mean. <laughs> <laughs> I think Cooks is just get, gets a bit outside of his body. Yeah, yeah, Cook. Oh, I'm yeah. not sure about that. Yeah, yeah. Warner. Okay. Ah, okay. Is it home then? Yeah. Yeah. Where are you bowling at Smith? Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Against the fucking Moon Stars. Hang on, AB De Villiers missed out on that side though. That's the only one I'll be like. Come yeah, on. but, yeah, but yeah, but for who? Yeah. Smith. Will, Kane five. Williamson. I just, I just is better player. I mean, I'd, I'd have AB De Villiers ahead of all of them. I don't give a fuck. Yeah, you're big on the AB. Yeah. And yeah, I'm that, I'm saying that like it's like, mate, you've got issues. Yeah, I yeah. do. He was weak outside off stump. Yeah, AB De Villiers. <laughs> <laughs> you just, you just got by outside off stump. Well, if there wasn't another, uh, you just planet got like or fifth stump to AB De Villiers, mate. Who, they were they were picking their best team for another <laughs> yeah. planet. Yeah, like I just I think AB De Villiers would have the mentality for that kind of game as well. Yeah, like okay. he'd step up. Yeah, against the Moon Stars, whatever, yeah. whatever you want to call them. Yeah, that's no, the Moon Stars. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking dumb. That'd be a good series, yeah, dude, mate. It's so <laughs> dumb. So dumb. No, um, no Pakistanis in it. Uh, yeah. Well, that is that is um, that is sad. Um, mate, uh, Smith Test Player of the Year, Coley ODI Player of the Year, Rashid Khan was of the decade. Uh, sorry, of the, of the decade. Yeah, Rashid Khan T Twenty. Yeah, that's I pretty cool. Player of the decade, mate. It's cool. I just cool when you're from Afghanistan. <laughs> it's good gear. Yeah. yeah, yeah. He's come from fours to to win <laughs> to win. I reckon you get a game in first class cricket. Uh, he'd start in twos for a club. Yeah. 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 We can prove it. Yeah. We've yeah. actually got quite a young leggy coming through in first grade. Going to give right. him a chance. He was in the juniors. Yeah. 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 No, he played 17s. Yeah, he played 17s. <laughs> he didn't start, but he was in the squad. His body's coming along he's really well. He was in the yeah. squad. Yeah. He yeah. also, he was nominated for the draft for the NAB, the That's NAB right. draft. Yeah, so they wanted to make sure he's sticking to cricket. And he's blonde, so, yeah, yeah not, you know, give him a go first uh, before we give Rashid Khan a crack. <laughs> I, I just wasn't aware that, I just wasn't aware that Rashid Khan was, he dominated the decade in T20. But like, what do I know about T20 cricket? What do I know, mate? I barely watch the fucking minis, <laughs> the IPL. You, you you ask Ko to put the minis together, and you don't watch. <laughs> watch them? them? Nah, no, not for me, not mate. Really. Not for me. Sunrises. It's nice no. to know the options there if I want to click yeah. on it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> if I'm not YouTubing uh, yeah. Rahane's innings, um, mate. The BBL. Yep. Uh, I want to talk to you about the BBL in terms of in terms of. There's a great game the other night. That six of stars game. Yep. And you look at the players playing that game, mm. mate, there's heaps of good players, in, good players in the BBL. But the conversation seems to be like, a few clubbies knocking about. And there are clubbies knocking about. That's true. Mm. But that game had Carlos Brathwaite, Jason Holder, Maxwell. Purin. Purin. Fucking, Probably the best in the comp. Yeah. Mm. And like, there's, there's, there's heaps of good players knocking about. Yeah. And Steve O'Keefe won the game by being LBW and no one appealed for leg yeah. by his fourth last ball. That's right. Your beauty. Yeah. <laughs> That's good. That's good gear. <laughs> no, but yeah, that's a BBL. That's yeah. why it's good gear. Yeah. Pura and Holder, Brathwaite, Billings, Roy, mm. Owen Morgan, Dale Milan, mm. Rashid Khan, the best of the decade. Yeah. Some good players kicking around. Yeah, there the are BBL. some good players, yeah. yeah. It's a good stick with which to whack, though, BBL. I think we talked about this last week. Mm. 
Cricketers need need to whack things. Mm. What's this two nine? Yeah, it, it, no, you do. You need you need to say things. Uh, and BBL is actually a genius from CA. Mm. You have got to create a competition that everyone can say shit, so everyone can just sort of feel like a little bit of a purist or whatever. Yeah, it's a pretty good competition. It's, it's okay. Yeah, you know. Uh, someone asked me today, uh, "Have you been entertained by the BBL?" Well, sometimes I am. Other times I'm not because that's cricket. Yeah. It's not always entertaining. It's literally the, the nature of the sport. It's not the league. Yeah. It's the sport. You just put it on. It's okay. Is it a sports pastime? Hobby. Like, hobby. Che- what, like chess. Is chess a sport? Is cricket yeah. a sport? Yeah. Oh, the baby or gambit. That's a show. Mm. Netflix 2021. Mate, I've got to tell you, like, this, this time of year... What about, what about DR? You've gotten to the BBL like, like bad umpiring decisions and stuff or any DRS gear? You like that? Um, I like it. My gear with it is that there's been heaps of bad umpiring calls and I'm like... Oh, I but that's a good thing to get upset about. Fuck yeah. You know what but I mean? I've like, feel good about but what I've, you know about cricket. I've stood um, in the umpire's position in like a game of backyard <laughs> cricket yeah. and I don't know what's going on. Exactly. I, I'm, mate, imagine being a BBL umpire. Mate, blokes are getting fucking hit in the dick. Yeah. You know, from the yeah. <laughs> from umpires. You st- you're a stationary target. Bats are the size of this fucking table. you got to look at the front foot because there's no, there's no bloke upstairs mm. checking the front foot. You're looking at LBWs. There's some noise going on. There's fucking fireworks over there. Some dances. Mate, plenty of blokes who listen to this show and they will be blokes. Mm-hmm. But all people listening to this show will uh, have spent time umpiring one way or another. There's a lot of cricket that happens in Australia where you have to go out and umpire low level cricket, but yeah. uh, cricket nonetheless. <laughs> and those people may not want to admit it, yeah. you know, externally. Mm. But when I've ever done that, I reckon a good percentage of the time I can't even count to six Mate, for an over. Yeah. You know, I, I, I lose it after like three. Oh, yeah. Is that over? That's right. Yeah. What is that? <laughs> yeah. oh, yeah. How long have we been standing yeah. here for? Having the counter doesn't help because I no. don't know if I clicked the last one because I've been thinking about something else. I don't know. I'm on TikTok at the same yeah, time. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I think bad BBL decisions add to the rich emotional tapestry of the game. <laughs> yeah. You've you know, said like, that. like the uh, excruciating reactions from players like yeah. AJ Ty. Like that's some of the great entertainment it's of like, BBL. It's like big dick reactions, but for any kind of decisions. <laughs> It's a masterstroke from Woodhill, who obviously, again, is the vehicle for everyone's frustration. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, uh, exactly. He's Christ at the cross. Yes. Uh, you know, like, I, I think so long as the umpires aren't on the take, and I'm not suggesting they are because they're Australian, and we don't do that. No, we don't do that. Um, and play on, Australia's you know. Like, that, this is cricket every Saturday. This is a character-building process mm. when things go wrong and mm. umpires make bad decisions. I think it's funny. I think it's good. Mate, I fucking love this. Mate, this time of year is so good. So good, mate. Mm. Boxing Day test. Mm. Don't know what day, day it is. is. Fucking, you roll into sun. the BBL, there's something going on, yeah. sun. I was here on Christmas Day because I obviously couldn't go home. And there's like some people down the street playing a game of cricket. Fucking awesome. That was shit. Yeah. That yeah, was terrible. Was. Yeah. Did you want to play? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you guys need one more? Yeah. You short? No, I can't. Yeah, all good. And mate, it's just good. This yeah. time of year is great. Yeah. Really good. I like What's it. What's that got to do with um, DR? You're just saying just be happy because it's good. The cricket's good. I just think cricket's good in all of its glory and all of its issues and problems. You can usually turn that into a lot of laughter. Mate, if you want to... Crickets... <laughs> this is something that I have always said. Crickets yeah. fucked. Yeah. But it's not because there are some bad umpiring decisions. Although, they are getting pretty bad. There are been, there's been some getting shockers. Getting bad? There's been some shockers, though, like consistently in this thing. I don't know why. But take your pick, like DRS or, I don't, ba- or straight I don't, bad decisions. I don't... Like take it, it, What do you mean? Well, like a lot of people fucking hate DRS and they want umpires call and all that sort of stuff and just yeah, go yeah, back yeah. to purity. But then there's a lot of people who like uh, who just cannot cannot cop bad umpire calls mm. in the DRS era. It's like we just got to bring DRS in. But DR, it's more DRS is better in cricket than it is say in football. Yeah, yeah. But let's just talk about not, let's confine it to that's cricket. That's not what you've asked. No. <laughs> Let's talk about something else now. I, I I just think bad decisions are kind of funny as long as um as long as they don't impact me. <laughs> <laughs> and, but I yeah, understand. Yeah. I understand that if they impact me, that they're funny for others. I got to say, it does add an element to see reactions of yeah. AJ Ty just head in his hands. Like it's I mean, you feel, brother. I feel to, it. Something to talk about, isn't yeah. it? Yeah, something to talk about. Absolute howl of yeah. I mean, how's he missed that? Well, Warren's going. While I'm off. sitting on the Warren couch is- with my fucking pale ale. <laughs> yeah, it's the most like fucking Dorito cru- yeah. like crust <laughs> yeah. on your chest. <laughs> <laughs> Shit. Fuck yeah, I fucking even I heard that. Yeah. <laughs> what with your fucking surround sound. <laughs> <laughs> The fucking AirPods multi-million dollar ears. technology yeah. plugged into the stumps. Oh, how could he not see that? Because he hasn't got hot spot, mate. In his fucking eyes, and he's not at a perfectly adjusted camera angle, mate. Why don't? Why doesn't every ground in Australia have DRS? Why don't we just mm. invest the eight billion dollars mm. at fucking skilled stadium for the three games a year it hosts? That's a good point. 
Hey, mate, uh, I'll tell you who's good. Cain Williamson, he scored yeah. his 23rd test century. He got 129 in the uh, New Zealand's first innings of 431. That's obviously a game going on at the moment as well. They'll um, New Zealand going to win that game. Um, They're going to play in that Lords game against India, aren't they? Well, if India – no, India will just need – they need to win four of their last eight games. Oh, well, you're saying Australia are cooked and yeah. they into India versus New Zealand. No, New Zealand seem to be winning all the time. And yeah, they do that, well at home. And mate, they're better at home than Australia are. Yeah. Or even India. They're yeah. so good. Um, they're not. Still second grade. <laughs> well, the team that came out of here was not a good team. Um, mate, they picked this guy, Kyle Jamison. He's playing his fourth test. Uh, Have you seen him before? Yeah. He's, he's got some tremlet areas. He is rig. Oh, is he's it? massive. Okay. He's, so, like, they were going to pick him in the SCG test here last year because he was – now, we're talking about using his height. He was a height-based selection. And there's Wasn't just, Wade body shaming pant as well? I actually didn't call that this morning. Oh, uh, yeah. Wade was having a real you put, go. You put on 20 kilos or whatever. Yeah. Man. What is it? 20, is getting, 25 kilos? Getting, Australia's getting pumped in that game. What are you doing? Anyway, sorry. We yeah. had, that was a different section. Ah, oh, he's a competitor. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Sorry. <laughs> it just gets – it helps you, his psychological arousal levels to perform better. <laughs> Mate, I'm t- I'll tell you what arouses me. Kyle Jamison. Yeah. 23 overs, 13 made in three for 35. I think he had two for, he had two for like 10 off like 21 overs or something right. at one point. Or, or when someone with a special rig does it, then it's cause for conversation. Mate, it wasn't the numbers I was looking at first. I was looking yeah. at the, the tightness of the chest for the shoulders. It was yeah. unbelievable. He's got some ch- – anyway, he's good. He's good and he's bowling good. Mate, there's some tall blokes sucking around <laughs> New Zealand cricket. cricket just had a, had a good day. <laughs> <laughs> but if you've seen the rig on it. Yeah. <laughs> How the shoulders on yeah. this thing. Mate, he's... What are his mitts like? Mate, I'm telling you. Okay. Who are you worried? It's Dom Sibley, there's Zach Crawley, there's Cameron Green, there's Chris Green. Oh, yeah. And there's, Chris Green. And there's, and there's Kyle Jamison. Few, there's a few big rigs there's going some, around. some big rigs knocking about. Big rigs coming back in cricket. Yeah, mate, they're coming nice. back. Oh, that's good. Yep. Good to know. <laughs> hey, uh, Faf made 199. Um, here's a quote that he said. I've batted better. <laughs> 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 really respectful like to Bradman. Sri Lanka. Yeah. yeah. Faf said, in match situations, I've made a lot of better hundreds when attacks are at their hottest, when conditions are at their toughest. I wouldn't put this close to any of those. Ah, it's king. <laughs> Fucking alpha. He's still doing what he's doing. He's doing what he's doing. He should have been in that team a decade. Just for rig. Yeah. That team had no rig based selection. Towel. Yeah. Just with a towel. Yeah. <laughs> what he did in Durban. Yeah. Yeah. Fuck yeah. Did they take the social element into that? We should, we should pick numbers? a team. We should pick a team. Yeah. Okay. T- ICC. TJC, team of the decade. And and sort of broaden the criteria to more of those kind of intangible social elements of cricket. Yeah. yeah. Do you remember, yeah. When, remember when Malinga was wearing like the same glasses that Siddle was wearing? He's looking a little bit overweight. He yep. had the frizzy hair. He's looking amazing. Yep. He's king. He's in. He's in. Yeah, Faf with the towel. Faf, towel. Yep. Um, Quentin the Cock for just walking away. Same mm. thing. Yep. Funny name. Like well, so juvenile. Well, so juvenile. <laughs> um, right, Pez, we're speaking to Josh Layla. Yep. And we're talking to well, the West Indies cricket captain, mate. He's on the great cricketer, Jason mm. Holder. And that's brought to you by who? It's brought to us. Brought to us. <laughs> mm. It's brought to us. Brought to you by Ponting Wines. Uh, again, and, and the Whites have come to, uh, they come come to, to their own. Well, oh, they're coming to their own this summer. So really, I've went into – because I, I, I finished those last week, so yeah. I've gone into the Reds now. Yeah. Uh, they're a treat. You started with the – with the white and then went to yeah, red. Yeah, I did. Right. I did. Well, uh, y- y- you can get 10% off a case of those bad boys if you use the code get a few, get a few. Uh, at checkout. Mm. Uh, but yeah, this interview is brought to you by Ponting Wines. All well, these interviews, I should say. Now, um, we'll say uh, off the top here, Jason Holder, uh, who we spoke to, he's going to put him in second. Okay. Just telling you how I'm going to edit the show nice. now. Um, yeah, we spoke to him on a phone line and the phone line wasn't amazing. Mm. And uh, we asked him... Pez asked him um, about uh, Black Lives Matter. He gave a wonderful answer. And uh, the phone line, it was some of the worst that it literally can't be used. Uh, yeah. But he was speaking about some really powerful stuff. And um, it's a real shame. So I have had to trim that um, that answer, unfortunately, which is a shame. But um, it Which is. we're noting, I think, because it's a it, <laughs> given everything we've spoken about and everyone yeah. else is, it begs the question because he said some amazing things about Black Lives Matter mm. as a West Indies captain. Mm. And um, I can't tell you how excruciating it was to have asked him for his observations on mm. Australia <laughs> in relation to that. Yeah. And he answered it fully and thoroughly and yeah. we could barely hear him. Yeah. Um, and uh, we, we apologise. Uh, and obviously that's a government conspiracy. Yeah. But uh, nevertheless, <laughs> it's a we want to push the button. We well, I'm not going to use that. Yep. Yeah, yeah. Um, so unfortunately, go. it's just one of those things. Uh, you know, obviously, we're just two idiots from the internet. 
And so when you get the West Indies captain on, it's amazing. Mm. And uh, sometimes there's nothing you can do about it. It's just a phone line. So uh, sorry about that. But um, please enjoy the next half an hour of Josh Layla and then Jason Nolan. Okay, here goes. We've got with us a uh, first-class cricketer of prodigious left-arm swing. Um, he's a BBL stalwart. He's currently with the Renegades, one of, um, I think, 17 or 18 BBL teams he's played with. Uh, how many have you played with, though, to be fair? Yeah, good question. Um, Josh Layla. Josh, welcome to The Great Cricketer. Boys, how are you going? Thanks very much for having me. Very welcome. Uh, now, you're a, uh, a, a long-serving stalwart servant of the Penrith Cricket Club yes. in Sydney grade cricket. Done a little bit of digging yeah. on you. Not much came up. Yeah. Yeah. Someone actually just wrote to me, he's squeaky clean, Layla, possibly the world's nicest bloke, plays his heart out for the Cats like he did for the Blues, etc. cetera. Mm. Um, yeah, so there's obviously a few skeletons there. Yeah, a few skeletons. Yeah. But uh, t- tell us about your relationship to grey cricket. And then also, can you just put Penrith Cricket Club in context for people who are listening from all around the world? Yeah, yeah, so Penrith Cricket Club uh, is one of 20 premier clubs that's part of the Sydney Cricket Association. Um, what anyone that plays within that competition would believe is the strongest sort of uh, amateur cricket competition in the world. Others, I'm sure, would, would want to argue. Um, and Penrith is a club way out in Western Sydney. So just playing with the new guy, a bunch of Renegades guys, they're like, oh, so where is, where is Penrith? It's like, well, you know where the CBD is? Drive 65 k's west and that's us. So... Um, we're way out at the foot of the Blue Mountains. Um, notable players include uh, none other than, than Pat Cummins, uh, Jordan Silk, myself. Ryan Hackney's a good up-and-coming player. Um, Ryan Gibson, who plays, is playing for the Adelaide Strikers at the moment. So that's us. We're a really strong club. Um, generally finish in the top half a dozen within the um, club championship each year. Uh, and we're really proud of that. Uh, you you, know, you mentioned that you grew up. You would have grown up playing with Pat Cummins and the Cummins family as well. I'd imagine, or, or playing at Penrith. I mean, what are some of um, Pat's secrets so that that Steve Smith can use when when uh, Tim Payne relinquishes the captaincy? Yeah, that's right. Uh, no, Pat. Um, Pat. Uh, unfortunately, you boys were just saying squeaky clean. Pat's even uh, even cleaner. Unfortunately, but no, you're right. Um, he played a lot of cricket with my younger brother Jake. So they're about five, they're both five years younger than me. Um, they grew up a lot together. Pat was renowned as like a, he's always a, a big kid, right? Like he's a, he's a big human now, but he's always a bit bigger than the other kids. Um, and was quite a, like probably more renowned as, as his batting at a younger age. And then within sort of three or four years, there were whispers around grade cricket that this kid in the threes or fours actually bowls okay. Um, and then he played half a season with us in first grade. And then Trevor Bayless, I think, got him into the New South Wales side. Um, to play in the old Big Bash, I think, play some T20s as a 16, 17 year old, and he, he'd never look back. Um, did Sam Billings play at Penrith as well? Yeah. yeah Bilbo played yes. there? Mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, Bilbo played there. So he was there for uh, just one season. Um, did really well for us, actually. Um, and we'll, we'd like to say he sort of catapulted him. He sort of came to us as a young 20, 21 year old, um, very, very, very rich kid from uh from <laughs> um, dad has a helicopter yeah yeah, got, yeah that's all right got to see the other side of the coin uh out at penrith for a little while but uh, i would like to think that we sort of catapulted his career from there and he's going brilliantly <laughs> and i uh, look forward to playing against him in a couple of days yeah well josh i think people already will be able to tell that you're obviously a very lovely guy and you speak so well about your club penrith okay. and reflects so well on it and, and i think that reflects well on penrith generally i mean anyone who's had anything to do with penrith knows it's all a really great bunch of blokes but if you don't play at penrith you still get upset about having to drive 65 k's to play there at Howe, and there's no trees yeah. and it's really hot and there's flies all on you and stuff so how how do you cope with that reputation of just being uh you know a difficult place to play against uh you know from blokes who are 65 k's away from the cbd mm-hmm. Yeah, well, the argument is that we have to pay the tolls every other week. You guys only have to pay <laughs> a year, right? So uh, we definitely got the rough end of the deal, although we do have far, um, far off, much more affordable housing. So, it's, you know, which is <laughs> cool. yeah. come down on. So, um, but yeah, it's look, it's a, um, it can be a barren place to play. Um, some would sorry, say, sorry, like, sorry, is are they the new sledges in Sydney Grade Cricket now? <laughs> like we, we've got affordable yeah. housing. Yeah. I haven't been yeah. there. Yeah. Costly. <laughs> I live on 700 squares. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, something, something like that. Now, the way the economy's gone the last few years. No, um, Penrith can be a, b- a bit of a tough place to play, and we certainly like to 
Um, I don't know whether it's part of our DNA that we're a tough team to beat. And maybe that's it. Maybe the three hours in the car each way um, mm. is part of that. You guys would know better than I, but for me, it's about five minutes around the corner. So I can't complain. Mm. You've obviously played at five BBL franchises, the Sixers, Thunder, Heat, Scorchers, uh, now with the Renegades. Clubs. I mean, yeah. clubs, clubs, sorry. Yeah, sorry. Um, but I mean, do you think each team has like an identity just yet or do you think the competition the competition changes so much each year with you know squad rotations and that sort of thing including yourself obviously that that they're all much of a muchness no i I wouldn't agree with that i I know what you're saying is that they don't have a sort of a carved out identity Mm. that's going to stick with the team for 20 or 30 years just yet but uh, i heard was having a conversation with someone the other night at dinner perhaps and they spoke about the Sixers and the Thunder when they started, or it might might have even been on the cricket. Maybe, I think it was Brad Hodge talking the other night in one of the games, talking about how Greg Shippard tried to target all the best players from Victoria to get them to the stars. And that sort of put the Renegades on the back foot. Mm -hmm. Similar with the Sixers, with Trevor Bayless, you know, he's one of the greatest coaches in the world, but he was the Sixers' first coach as well. Um, And had the Thunder went down a different route and that sort of put them on the back foot. So... The teams do have an identity and they sort of have been put on a bit of a course, definitely. Um, whether that will hold up over 20, 25 years, it would be hard mm. to say. But certainly, yeah, they are. there is some differentiation there for sure. It's funny you mentioned, like, just picking up on that idea, Josh, uh, you probably yep. don't welcome this conversation, but uh, a few weeks ago, Ben Cutting was talking about why he walked away from the Brisbane Heat. Yep. And he was pretty upfront. He's, he sort of said... Uh, five or six other guys had left the Brisbane Heat as well last year, including yourself, uh, you know, Cameron Gannon, James Pattinson, Matt Renshaw, Jack Presswich. Uh, and he said there was definitely something in the water. Would you uh, would you back him up on that? It certainly looked like there was when he played against them the other week. Uh, yeah, that, that was quite enjoyable to watch. Um, no, happy to welcome the conversation. The Heat um, are an excellent, it's an excellent place to play and to learn cricket, right? Like the way the brand that they want to play took me a few years to wrap my head around, but this sort of take the game on mentality, I sort of thought was a bit of a cop out for the first year or two. And then I started to realize that you're the team that the other teams don't want to play. So if you're, if you can pull that off to walk on the field ahead of the other team before a ball's bowled, I think is a really interesting concept that I hadn't even thought of before. Um, the challenge with that is it's high risk, high reward. And we've seen the last few years that we, we haven't got, well, we, the Heat hadn't got the balance right. Um, you know, and then it's a bit of a house of cards. So um, from, I can see Cutsy's frustration and certainly there were times, you know, when I was in the team or I was sitting on the bench where it sort of feels a little bit like the same movie again and it can be a bit disheartening, but um, certainly for me, it was no bad blood. I would have loved to have stayed, you know, if we, if we could have worked out, um, but the opportunity for me came up at the Renegades. Mm. Um, I often say moving to the heat was one of the best things for my cricket, for what I've just spoken about, to learn more about the game and to, to play with different players and different coaches. It's sort of, I was 26, 27 when I went there, I thought I'd played all the cricket in the world and I've learned as much in the first two or three years as I had in the previous 10. Mm. So the opportunity to do that at the Renegades was too good to pass up, but um, certainly no bad blood there. I saw the boys got home last night, but it felt a little bit um, like the same. I felt like I'd seen this movie before <laughs> and I know how it ends. So it was nice to see them get home as well. Mm. You actually had, um, because you, you had really you had really good success at the Heat, didn't you? I mean, you had five for there. You obviously got your hat trick as well last year. Um, it's really like has there been a hat trick in the history of the competition or any hat trick ever of like less celebration? Like I think like Gilchrist Gilchrist was commentating and he said, "Not sure how many of the Heat players know about it, or maybe they don't care." person, they just couldn't give a shit. No. Um, <laughs> I'm going to say zero. So yeah. Linny and I were trying to figure out. So famously, Rossi comes running over and Linny and I are having a chat. And we're talking about how to get the hat trick right. So we take we took a wicket off the last ball, the previous over, which we didn't know about. And then we obviously took the two, the first two balls of the next over. So we're like, all right, how are we going to get, I think Jason Barendorf was on strike. How are we going to get him out? It'd be nice to get a hat trick. They're nine, eight or nine down so we can take some risks. Mm. And then Rossi comes running over and says, that was a hat trick. And we're like, no, 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 like this is the hat trick ball, you idiot. And then it sort of, that was it. And you sort of see me look off like, what? I'm trying to like then, because for me, it's just about any ball that I don't get hit for six is a win. So yeah. they were all, <laughs> right? it was like 
like, oh, that's a nice wicket. That's good. Oh, that's another wicket. That's good. So I, yeah. I wasn't really, you know, thinking about it, obviously. So yeah. Uh, yeah. So that was it. Like you, you guys might, you guys play so much cricket all the yeah. time. They must like all blend into like even the same game, like the same overs, you know, they must all like kind of blend. We didn't into- know if you're at dinner or listening to the TV. I was <laughs> Brad Hodge, which, which just, I mean, I'm going to ask you about that bubble in a sec, but there's so much cricket that you guys so play. Much. Hey, Yeah. 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 There's heaps on, um, but there's like, on. There's, yeah. you know, the game going to start in half an hour. I'm going to be watching that one as well. So um, there's a little bit of cricket nuffy in there as well as we all are, but there's a little bit. I'm going to justify it and say there's a little bit of research on as well. But yeah, um, yeah you definitely get a bit desensitised to it without a shadow yeah. of a doubt. Yeah, yeah. 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 Uh, so does as we. I mean, not not everyone who listens to our pod watches it on YouTube, but I can see you're in your um, your room there in your hotel. Uh, you're yeah. in the bubble. You're only um, yeah, he's showing us around now. So yeah, there's a hotel room. That yeah, looks all right. Let's leave okay from there. <laughs> um, I mean, there's been guys that you're playing with that have been in and out of bubbles for six or so months. I mean, can you take yeah. us into what it does to the mind? I, I know, uh, and everyone, you know, a lot of cricketers are so grateful and they will point out that there are many people worse off in the world and whatnot. But just in terms of the experience for you, I mean, I noticed the other day, uh, you, meant, you mentioned on Twitter that you got a nice care package from the ACA, sort of wondered where CA was on that as well. I mean, how is the mind and, and, and how are the players, uh, generally speaking, going with the bubble? Yeah, they're okay. Steady, I would say. Um, the real test is going to be, I, I would say, in about two weeks' time. We go to Melbourne at the back end of the tournament for two and a half weeks. So the boys are going to be at home, but they're not going to be able, or unlikely to be allowed at home yeah. unless they get some exemptions. Um, and they're not going to be able to do the things in their city that they normally do, like all their normal comfort. So that's going to be a bit challenging, I would think. There was a time, so we were in Hobart for the first few weeks of the tournament. And on about day 10 or 11, I sort of woke up and got this, oh, not again. Like, you know, sometimes you wake up in someone else's room and you're like, where am I? You know, you slept <laughs> all the time. I woke up <laughs> daily. I woke up and I was like, where am I? And I was like, oh, no, I'm still in Hobart. I was like, oh, shit, I'm still <laughs> That's the only only time that it's happened, but we can't really complain. Like CA has done a decent job. Um, I really like the idea that where we've been so far, there's been multiple teams staying. So we were in Hobart with four or five other teams. We're here on the Gold Coast with the Sixes and the Stars. Um, we just went down to play the Thunder in Canberra, and they've been at the same hotel. You know, so they've been in the same room for uh, three to four weeks with barely any other teams stopping in. I think that would be a bit like that would be really really tough. Like. I've got a nice room here that looks out to a golf course. Those guys were sort of stuck in the back streets of Canberra with not much around. So um, I think we're doing okay, to be fair, but we're, we're oh, how far in are we? Three weeks. So um, the test will be, I think, maybe an, another week or two's time and holidays have worn off. Everyone else has gone back to their day-to-day life and we're sort of in here for four or five weeks. You'd have a few guys in your setup as well, like like Aaron Finch or even Kane uh, Richardson, who've had yeah. who've been in bubbles beforehand, or in Kane's case, they welcomed a new child recently yeah. as well. I mean, how do the guys who have been doing bubbles before the BBL seem to be going? They're okay for now. Um, they're probably a bit more qualified, to be fair. Like they probably have a bit more of a routine. But mm. we saw Finchy. So Finchy left straight after our. I'm going to say second game um, to go home and to miss the third. So he he said, I, I'm starting to get annoyed at things that don't normally annoy me. I need to go home and, you know, be in my own place and see um, my wife and things like that. So that's been great. He's only come back in the last three or four days. So he's good for now. Richo as well, snuck, tried to sneak away um, just before. So he was in Melbourne, I think, before the tournament training and then snuck away for a few days um, while the borders and stuff allowed to go home and to see his little one and to, and to see his wife. So those guys are okay, but they're not um, impervious. Is that a word? Um, because they've also had to make sure they've snuck in little breaks and things. So um, they're only human. Mm. I imagine there's not much circuiting going on at all um, in the, in the big bash, which is the main question we've got you on. Um, <laughs> but- yeah, well, that, yeah. Wait, wait, is Lenny on straight after me? Or, or <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think you know, in, uh... Probably be pretty happy with that. Um, no, not a great deal going on, um, especially while we're, we're doing the partner period as well. So while the partners are here, definitely not. But um, there's been a little bit of Pinot Pong going on. So when you run out of beers, you crack out the Pinot and, and play Pinot Pong instead. There's been a few nights of that. 
Um, and we've certainly got some, I think you used the term stalwarts before. We've got a couple that are that are um, giving the tree a shake every other night, I think, uh, regardless of whether they have to do it in their room or whether they've got to do it uh, at a nightclub. So they're going okay. Drinking stalwarts. <laughs> Never want to be called that. <laughs> well, in happier, you know, pre-pandemic times, Josh, you know, you, you, you won the Caribbean Premier League with the Barbados yeah. Tridents, my favourite team. Yep. You guys had the Tridents. Yep. Um, you know, I mean, how much, how much fun is the Caribbean Premier League? It looks, it looks great. It is. So it's a bit, it's a bit chaotic. Yeah. Um, and it's really different from a scheduling point of view. That's the first thing. So you'll go to Guyana and you'll play your game. Guyana is a different part of the world, let me tell you. Mm. But one of the most passionate crowds I've ever seen and one of the loudest crowds I've ever seen. Um, they were excellent. But they'll play three games in four days in Guyana and then that'll be like part of their home season done. And then they'll go on a road for like two weeks and they'll come back and play another three games in four mm. days. So it's a bit different. We're normally you know, used to getting one game a week, basically, if you're a fan base. But um, the boys, yeah, there's plenty of stalwarts over there, to use that term again, plenty of drinking stalwarts. Um, famously, when you play at Guyana, you get um, a bottle of rum as well for your time there. Um, I'm going to forget the name of it, and I'm going to get in lots of trouble um, off some people. But um, lots of drinking, lots of dancing, enormous amounts of celebrating, and they're just awesome guys to play with. Honestly, the tournament is so much fun. Um, it's not, yeah, it's not as crystal clear and clean as the BBL and, you know, all that kind of stuff, but it's a very fun tournament. People that play, play in it have a lot of, you know, have a good time. And there are some bloody good cricketers. Like we see Big Jace um, is a, a, a number one for me. Big Jace Holder and Carlos are out here with the sixes. Um, uh, Puran, who's an absolute superstar, is out here at the moment. And as long as, as long as the Spice Man, so... Um, I'm loving, you know, reminiscing on those boys when he played with and against them a couple of a couple of years ago. But it's great to see them out um, out here for the big bash, and hopefully they can turn it on even more because they're good fun. Just noting recently, Josh, you've started talking about uh, your role and might have been an instrumental role in the uh, Reflect Forward campaign. Yeah. So like a yeah. new movement about. I'm just reading from the CA website here, but starting yeah. an ongoing conversation about racism in sport, working towards eliminating it. Um, I suppose an open question is, can you tell us a little bit about that and, and how that relates to everything going on in relation to what uh, Australian cricket's doing following Black Lives Matter? And then I guess a second question off the back of that as well um, to ponder is, like, how do you go uh, as an Indigenous role model and then being put up as one uh, and, and often being asked to come forward to be that guy? Yeah. Uh, is it something yeah, you actively yeah. choose and how's that made you feel doing it? Uh, it's not something that I actively chose and it, to be honest it made me feel a bit awkward for for lots of years until it just sort of becomes part of your identity and people sort of ask you about the become the person that you ask about the Imparja Cup and things you know that's what you're their source of information because where else are they going to get it from right so um, the Reflect Forward campaign is something that we put together over the last few months um, I got a phone call from Pat Cummins um, in sort of July or August, um, the national men's team had been doing some planning around what they were going to do around Black Lives Matter. They knew they needed to get up to speed on some things um, and they wanted to do some positive stuff in this space. And I think they were asked to reach out to people they knew to get some ideas. So I got this call from Pat and knew that there was an interest at a national cricket level to become involved in this space. Like the whole BLM, BLM thing is huge right and there's so many tentacles to it there's good there's bad there's um all these different parts to it and it's so emotive and strong and being an indigenous guy myself it's like okay i've sort of seen casual racism i've been a part of casual racism a lot i'm an indigenous guy from western sydney like it's part of my upbringing but it's like this is a really important thing to a lot of people and i think i can do some slightly positive work in this space and it's probably about time that I do something rather than the, the idea was if I'm not doing anything, like I'm not pro, you know, I'm not, um, uh, what's the term, like a protester or any, you know, yeah, someone advocate. like that. Yeah. An advocate. Sorry, I was trying to think of the right word. Yeah. But I knew that if I wasn't doing anything, then I'm sort of saying that where things are at right now is acceptable. And I also thought that's probably not right as well. So I was like, what can I do in this space to, to, to contribute to a little bit of good? So um, I reached out to Cricket Australia and the ACA and said, you guys don't normally agree on a lot of things, but is this maybe something we could get you both to buy into? And they were both 
excellent and they've both been really, really supportive and helped make the whole thing come to life. And then we just needed to find someone who was an expert in this space. And that was our partners at One Love Australia who sort of um, already did some work in the education racism space and had the, the, the know-how to sort of bring something like this to life. So um, as you would have seen, there's some great videos out there from some of our, the best cricketers in the country having some conversations about racism and it's done in a really cool and contemporary contemporary way again the idea being that um, you don't have to believe that racism exists or some people say that it doesn't you know and don't bring politics into cricket all that kind of stuff it's like you don't have to be at either end of the spectrum all we want you to do is wherever you are watch this stuff move yourself a little bit further along the spectrum if we can get that you know happening to a lot of people then that's sort of the rising tide lifts all boats so the idea is not for people to leave their interactions with reflect forward and be you know experts on racism because that's just not going to happen right that's that's a very small percentage of the population but there is a large percentage of the population that will think like i think and say okay if i want to get educated on this stuff or just know a little bit more where can i go to find it and that's the idea behind Re reflect forward so mm. nice one so i suppose the message would be for you know for people to watch it you know to watch those conversations and uh, yeah, yeah, have a few conversations yeah. themselves yeah 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 that's right um the conversations are great uh, and hopefully it just sparks you know kids in particular to just ask mum and dad about what's racism where does it come from are you guys you know what do you think about it and if the kids can uh if it makes a difference for the next generation that's awesome and if it causes some people like that are our age to sort of reflect on their own behaviors and you know next time they go to say something or make a joke. Like it happens to me all the time at the moment to go to put on a particular voice or to use an old common, you know, sledge that, you know, is, has been around for 20 years. I've got to consciously stop myself and go in a different direction, which is perfect. And hopefully that starts to happen for a few other people. Nice one. Oh, well, we appreciate it, mate. And, you know, you're just saying earlier, you don't have to always put your hand up to be that role model, but it is, um, yes. you know, it is appreciated uh, to, to reach in and, and, and to give some of those words for a lot of people listening uh, and to do it in a way that's super, you know, normal and accessible as, as well. So, um, mate, we've, uh, we were late starting this interview with you and you've given us heaps of time. So uh, we'll let you go um, because you've got some research to do to watch some BBL <laughs> tonight, of course. Thank you, boys. And I might have to catch up with a few of those stalwarts afterwards. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, he goes, we've got with us here today the youngest ever West Indian captain. He's a guy with a higher average with the bat than he does with the ball in test cricket. Mm -hmm. uh, one of the most impressive guys in the game. And he's with the Sixers at the moment. I'm talking about Jason Holder. Jason, welcome to The Great Cricketer. Hi, Lee, guys. Um, how are you doing? Thanks for having me. Really good, man. I know you've been doing heaps of media. So let's uh, <laughs> we'll, we'll, try and, we'll try and keep it light. Mate, uh, you, you started with the West Indies. Or you became captain at age 23. We normally ask people how they sort of got into cricket or where they played their junior or club cricket. Uh, you know, did you even spend much time playing club cricket in the West Indies? Um, yeah, I have played quite a bit of club cricket back at home. Obviously, prior to playing international cricket, um, so my club at home in Barbados is called a Wondrous Cricket Club. Um, yeah, we've had a few West Indian players to pass through: Ian Bradshaw, Kirk Edwards, Craig Barfit, uh, Pedro Collins, just to name a few. Um, and then we had the one is probably the, the most remar well remembered voice in West Indies cricket is Tony Kozia. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, he's at our club. He was at our club as well too. So, yeah, I played quite a bit of club cricket growing up. Um, since I've been playing as an Australian cricket, probably played a handful of club games to be quite honest. But yeah, um, came right through the club system, right through our age group system in, in the Caribbean, and you know, made my way to the West Indies. I mean, you're playing you're playing so much cricket all the time now, Jason. Even even then, you know, during this pandemic. But um, my main question I want to ask you is that when you just you've just come from the IPL, I mean, did you get a chance, uh, you know, when you saw Ben Stokes to tell him that you're the best uh, all rounder in the world at the moment? <laughs> I'm sure he saw the um, the the rankings, and he he pretty much knows where where I stand and where he stands. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so. So I don't think there was any 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 need for him to to be told. Um, yeah, but yeah, an awesome cricketer, um, really good competitor. And, you know, when you step across the line, you know you want to be playing against the best. You know, I think you really mm -hmm. cherish your performances when you play against the best. And and it's also noted, man, when when you do well against the best players in the world, you know, it's always be, be remembered. So mm -hmm. yeah, mm -hmm. great competitive. <laughs> 
Uh, can you tell us about? I know you're only with the Sixers for three games. As we go to where you've got one tomorrow, and then you're off again. I mean, what's your time with them been like? You had a little break recently. I know that some of the boys were um, pushing it pretty hard. I, I've got word that you've been singing John Legend uh, a little bit to the team. I mean, like, like, where do you fit in with the Sixers and uh, and, and the circuit and the partying? John Legend. I wonder who told you that. <laughs> um, <laughs> This Sixers has been great, man. Um, these boys here, uh, the entire group, you know, you got from Joey Hawkins to the, the CEO down to, you know, our last player. You know, they've just been awesome. Um, it, it's always difficult being away from friends and family during Christmas. Um, this has probably been my fifth, um, if I'm not mistaken. And, yeah, every single time I've done it, 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 it probably gets harder and harder. But this time around, you know, not having your, your closest friends and family here, I think the Sixers family really made up for that, man. And, you know, we had a really nice dinner the night before on Christmas Eve. And then we had a really nice lunch and everybody came together. So, yeah, it was really good and refreshing to be around. You know, people who can, can always put a smile on your face and then always, you know, generally look look out for your best interests. Uh, and that's just what this group is all about, man. I thoroughly enjoy the guys. And, you know, definitely if I get the opportunity to come back again and they want to have me, <laughs> I'll, I'll definitely come back to the Sixers. I'm sure, I'm sure they'll probably have you back, mate. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, I want to ask you, what's the, what's the standard of the, of the BBL that you've seen so far compared to the other T20 leagues? And, and which grade player has asked you for um, free kit in the bubble? <laughs> <laughs> um, the standard has been really good. Um, mm. BBL is obviously really, really, really highly around the world. Um, I, it's just it's just interesting some of the differences you know that I've found you know just playing around the world, mm. particularly here in these kind of wickets where there's a lot more bounce and carry, mm. yeah, and the, the square boundaries or the boundaries in general are, pretty, are quite bigger. Um, tons of bowlers tend to to, to stay into the wicket, um, and that's just one thing that I've really picked up. Whereas around the world, when you get smaller boundaries, um, are not as not as friendly in terms of carry and bounce you know people go block hole a lot earlier um, but you, you say that you know you still see batters whacking it all over the place obviously the power series has brought another advent to the entire tournament so mm. you now have to think about two overs particularly to two set batters mm. uh, at, at probably the the turning point of the innings um, mm. but yeah generally the, the standard of cricket is very very good in terms of great players asking for kit, I uh, probably haven't had any yet. Um, but, you know, my last game, maybe players are coming to, to clean up my bag and uh, let me travel home a little later. <laughs> <laughs> like I say, clean up your bag. So is that something, Jason, that you've experienced in other tournaments, you know, some of the lower level players mm. just coming up and just trying to, I guess, seagull in on, on whatever they can? Like, Is that a common thing? <laughs> it is, man. Um, I, I'm sure you get around the world, man. Most players... Now, most overseas players, you know, always try to leave back, you know, whether it be playing kit, you know, whether it be um, pads, gloves, you know, whatever they don't feel the need. And some players just genu- genuinely come up on that because, you know, you're probably one of their favorite players or someone you're really getting on well with. And, oh, you just may have something that you picked up from them that you really, really like more than them. So, you know, I mean, I'm quite obliged to, to, to give, man. I've always been a really giving person. And if any of the boys happen to, to see anything that they like and, I may probably make better use of it than I would. And I have no problems giving away. <laughs> what sort of like? Uh, sorry to keep laboring on this, but like, like, how do they ask? You know, like, what what are the sorts of things they say? Like, they you know, like, what? How do they phrase it? Can I, can I have some gloves? Yeah. Well, I've 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 picked up a really a really interesting nickname. So they'll be like, "Hey, Stubby, um, <laughs> this a nice this, this is a nice bat you have here, man. Um, what weird is it?" You know, and then I'll probably get into a few more questions around the, the actual bat. Uh, you got any spares? <laughs> and, then, <laughs> and then they'll just suddenly, suddenly uh, with any question. You know, but it's great fun, man. It's great fun. You guys, have been, as I said before, I've I've never met such a closely knit bunch of guys. You know, probably ever in my life. And these guys definitely live as a family, man. And, and you could just look around the, the different BBL teams here. Because obviously we've been in a hub and we've had a few, of the, a few of the other teams around as well and, and they just live as a family. Uh, for me, that has been one of the standouts of the tournament so far for me. Mm, mm. Jason, I, I, I think like international cricket needs 
like a strong West Indies team. We sort of we sort of miss the the glory days of the, the of the the powerhouse that was the you know the the West Indies international team. But where where is cricket at? Do you think in the West Indies? I mean, has it sort of fallen behind a little bit in terms of maybe um, football and basketball? I think the the the, the biggest sports there now is is there still an appetite in the West Indies for you know a generation of really young and exciting cricketers? Well, just to set the record clear, I don't think football or basketball is is mm-hmm. watched more or liked more mm-hmm. than in the Caribbean and cricket. Cricket is still definitely a main sport in, in, in the Caribbean. Mm-hmm. What I would say is, obviously, with Usain Bolt and, and the, the, the successful sprinters that Jamaica has produced in the last mm-hmm. decade, mm-hmm. athletics has definitely taken taken a, uh, or been on the rise. Mm-hmm. Um, so you get a lot more, a lot more youngsters coming through. You know, wants to take a track and field, but again. Nothing has has um, over, overshadowed or overpowered cricket. Mm. Um, look, we are at a really, really funny time in our cricket. Personally, um, the financial situation of the organisation is is a headache at, at present. You know, us really, really struggling to stay afloat, uh, and that has really leaked into putting a strong, firm structure in place for development. Mm. Um, and, and I and I believe if 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 we don't get that financial support or if we don't get to a point where we can sustain ourselves comfortably on all seats financially then we can never put the structures in place that for the likes of Australia or in England or India may have and that's really differences to me in international cricket I don't think talent ways were any different to any other country in the world mm. just the structure and the infrastructure that players I mean that other players may have around the world uh, we're just not open to in the Caribbean um, and yeah I think as an administration, um, we've let ourselves down, you know, and in particular some of our player, player administration relationships. But um, in the grand scheme of things, you know, you can only hope as a, as a current cricketer, you know, that we could, you know, be on the same page a little bit more and, and both sides, you know, pulling in one, one direction. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I mean, I mean <laughs> you, you probably loathe to comment on it, Jason, but, uh, you know, I think the ICC should share more of it around, to be mm. honest, because we'd love to see the West Indies going uh, way yeah. better and you having way better infrastructure to express your talents. Uh, you made some really ins- inspirational comments in October, Jason, in relation to Black Lives Matter, and uh, you went on to say you were just following a bit of what Marky Holding was saying uh, and just how it's difficult to see the importance of it for a lot of uh, nations who may not believe they're directly affected by it but often are, mm. and to... Um, you know, keep that education going. You know, being here in Australia, it, it would, I suppose that would still be your view. And, and what's been your impressions of what you've observed uh, in relation to Black Lives Matter and, and race issues uh, since you've been here? Yeah, it's, 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 all, it's an ongoing battle. Uh, I want to say an ongoing battle, an ongoing battle for the world. Um, the awareness definitely just needs to needs to be flooded around. Um the more awareness, the more support and education we can put behind not only Black Lives Matter but racism in general. Um, I think the better off the world would be. For me, it's just people are ignorant to the fact and not genuinely being racist or racial towards other people. Uh, and that's where the education needs to come in. Um, something that that possibly needs to be spoken about a little bit more maybe in schools or talk. Mm. It's just a little history, history around um, racism history around different races so that, you know, kids growing up, you know, can have a better sense of racism or, 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 or different races. Oh, man, such a cool answer. Uh, um, Jason, uh, thanks so much for joining us on The Great Cricketer. Huge privilege for us to speak with you. Wishing you all the best for your, uh, well, last few days, I guess, with the Sixers. Hopefully we'll see you back here and, and all the best with all your work with the Windies. Ben, thanks a lot for having me. I appreciate it. Okay. Josh Layla and Jason Holder there. He goes, it's really time for Budgie Smuggler to come into its own. Uh, oh, it's, yeah. It's, uh, there, there couldn't be a better time, a better week. Tis the season. Really. Tis the season. Just Instagrammable pictures of people in beaches everywhere. Where it's covered safe. To you and yours. And to you and yours. Uh, and uh, Budgie Smuggler will, will deliver whatever you like to you and yours. Uh, throughout this period, this New Year's period. <laughs> they will, I ask. Any accessory they'll, you they'll, want. They'll deliver to any you and yours. Any apparel that you want. You and yours. Keep saying that we've gone through we've gone through it so many times. Uh, great friends of our show, all Australian mate. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, you know, if you've had a great year with fitness, which I don't think many people have, I would be surprised. Uh, the, the budgie smugglers will be looking particularly good on you at the moment. If you haven't, 
they can still look really good depending on the design that you put on it. You can make your own one. Nathan Lyon the other day had his own nice Garys on through Budgie Smuggler. Saw that, yeah. And I guess what I'm trying to say is it, it's a pretty fucking flexible brand. Pretty, pretty, pretty flexible. Yeah. Um, and uh, they're great friends of ours, and we want to pump them up wherever Pez, possible. I, I imagine that more than any other year, there's going to be some Janu- Janu- January mm. and January. Mm. And Adnan Yanazai. That's right. <laughs> Fuck, that's well executed. Um, there's going to be some news resolutions this year, fitness related on January 1, I reckon, this year. Yeah. Because things are just starting to waste a little bit. Well, yeah. in some states yeah. and some parts of the world. Not so much. Actually, it's never been worse in the world now. Think mm. about that. But, you know, things will turn around. Mm. Things will turn around for everyone. And there's going to be some, yeah, fitness resolutions this mm. year. Budgie Smuggler, getting them ready. And even if you don't. Get them ready. Budgie Smuggler still, you yours. still gets around you. It's, uh, you know, it's, it's the proud host annually of the Australia's most ordinary rig. It's actually so it's anti weight. Cel- it celebrates all shapes and sizes. No rig yeah, shaming. There's no rig shaming with no Budgie Smuggler. Shaming. No. You can get twenty uh, percent off uh, free shipping. Mm. Sorry, you can you get free shipping. You get free shipping. Yeah, free if, shipping. If you use the code champ. If you use the code champ. Pardon me. At budgiesmuggler.com.au. That's definitely the website. Hashtag Ask TJC. Couple of good questions this week, Bez. Uh, I'm actually looking forward to the Patreon show, uh, which will be coming out on New Year's Day. Mm. That's what you need. That's just what you need because there's some there's some more belters. Actually, I had quite a few good ones come in. I think it's just, mate, it's when the test summer starts. I didn't realise this. In fact, you didn't realise it either because you, you told me the same thing, that you don't realise as an adult when, you know, like the summer doesn't start till the tests are on. Yeah. And the tests are now on. People are more engaged in it. People have got better stories. There's some belters. Let me read you Let's the first go. one from Ali Lynch. Yes. Dear the Grand Budapest Hotel and my Hig Rat Greek wedding. Not bad. When asked what is your greatest regret, I've always said that it was not taking a year off after school or uni to go and be shit at cricket in Australia for a summer. Doing so would likely have meant I would never have met my wife and I surely wouldn't have been so lucky career-wise given the ever-worsening grade career prospects. But still I say this, picturing my accent and the flat decks bringing me copious, non-zero, chops <laughs> and runs in the early 2010s. The tales of being and the social standing of the young Aussie that comes to the UK to bully old men on the village green is well trodden around the great cricketer, the, the cricketer cinematic universe. But where in the hierarchy would a young Brit hacking in a lower grade stand? Are they met with suspicion, derision or a begrudging acceptance? Is this imagined halcyon summer something that would actually have derailed life how dark can it get for foreigner in great cricket? And finally, what are your greatest regrets? What a dark way to, st- to finish the year 2020. This is our last show for 2020, Pez. Oh, yeah. Well, <clears throat> thanks for the question, Ali. As I've always said, Brits are vehicles through which Australians project their disdain for weak, soft toffs. <laughs> <laughs> so it's not the same. That's good. It's not the same as being a... a muscular Australian bully boy yeah. um, playing against a gentleman uh, in village cricket. Yeah. Uh, you know, we've had so many good English players come over here. Mm. Some of those toffs might be guys like Sam Billings or Zach Crawley, mm. who are literal worldies. They'll mm. still start in the third net. Yeah. Maybe twos. So they have first have to prove themselves. Yeah. That said, we had some great... English guys at uh, cricket clubs that I played at. That's always the way. Uh, you know, once you get to know blokes, they're good blokes. Um, yeah. yeah. One guy at our club, and uh, he was a, he was a third grader, and this is when I was playing at Balmain. And I'll never forget that, like... His at, name was Joe Burns. <laughs> that man's name? <laughs> I'll never forget uh, that uh, at the end of one training session, mm. it was decided that the whole club would participate in a, like a... Uh, in a fielding drill, right? And it was um, high stakes. It was basically like, uh, some people will be able to imagine this. There's just one stump. The entire club is running in a circle around this stump. Quite a big circle. Right. Right? Quite a big circle. Right. Um, I reckon, because not every player from every team turns up. No. I reckon there's about 30 guys there. Yeah. Right? Let's just say in my memory from about th- 13 years sure. ago. Sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and so we're all running in a circle, and you, when when the ball comes to you, you've got to get it, and you've got to ping ping it at the stumps, right? Okay. You're trying to hit the stumps. Got it. Um, and let's let's say there's three stumps there. Oh and, yeah, I know um, this drill. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you keep running around I in a circle. I fucking hated that yeah. drill. Yeah, yeah. And you keep going. The the high stakes was that, um, once you hit the stump, 
you could exit the game. Oh, right. And so basically the last person to hit the stump um, would was then deemed to have to get naked and run around the field, do a whole <laughs> lap around the field. So everyone was trying to hit the stump. I bet they were. And this poor Pom. <laughs> um, it was a cold day. Well, that's the twist. Because I was thinking this poor Pom yeah. has actually not been able to hit the stump. Yeah. And I was like, this bloke <laughs> is going to have to get his kid off in front of the entire club. He's probably three games into his time yeah. in Australia. Yeah. And do a whole lap naked. He's 15. Yeah. Yeah. He, he wasn't. He was, he was of age. Anyway, took his kid off, has an enormous penis. <laughs> He's missing and, a purpose. and he was welcome at the club. <laughs> <laughs> you know? And I reckon he knew exactly what he was doing. <laughs> I watched that Throw thing, mate. I watched that thing yeah. flop around his yeah. leg as he was running around, <laughs> fucking broadest grin on his face, and everyone's just going, "Oh, have a look at him!" <laughs> straight up the twos. <laughs> Didn't straight, score right. Mate, straight up the twos, straight, mate. Straight out with the boys. Straight into Crazy's uh, circuit group. <laughs> so you know, it's gonna be a bruise in a bruise. Doesn't thigh. matter where you're from, Ali. Yeah. Uh, some people just have dicks that are too big to fail. That's true. Just like just like the banks, <laughs> I um I, I wrote wrote about this in uh, one of the books. Um, had a guy at the club. Oh, it would have come out the room really. You know. <laughs> um, his name was Neil, and Australia won that series, uh, the Ashes series out here in Ashes series. And Australia won that year five nil, and people started calling me five Neil. <laughs> <And> that's right. <laughs> that's fucking just so unrelenting. Just lovely, lovely guy from Sheffield. Uh, good cricketer, but so he was bad. he was from the country where his yeah. team didn't do well. Yep. So his name oh. was Five Neil. Five Neil. Yeah. <clears throat> All right. Next one, please. It's from anon. Anon. Full stop. <laughs> Straight <laughs> up to Zeus. Here we go. <laughs> okay, <laughs> dear Adam and Jeff. <laughs> <laughs> Things are getting fucking more and more yeah, ridiculous. I know. Mm, and aggressive. Yeah. Season's greeting, boys. <laughs> to I you need, yours. I need some advice on what could be a life-changing decision. I've suspected for some time now that my partner has been having an affair. The usual signs. Phone rings. I answer. Someone hangs up. She started going out with the girls, inverted commas, a lot, recent, a lot recently. Although when I ask which girls, it's always just some friends from work. You, you don't know them. I always look out for a ride coming home, but she always walks from around the corner. I can usually hear a car driving off as she walks towards our house. If it really is an Uber, why not just get dropped off in front? I once picked her phone up just to see, uh, just to see what time it was, and she went off her tits at me and screamed that I should never touch her phone again, and why was I checking up on her? Anyway, I have never approached a subject with my girlfriend. I think deep down I just didn't want to know the truth, but last night she went out again and I decided enough is enough and to find out what was going on once and for all. I decided I was going to hide behind my car, which would give me a view of the whole street so I could see which car she was getting out of. I don't know why I did it, but as I walked out the front door, I grabbed my trusty old bat out of my bag. I had no intention of using it, but you never know. Well, I waited and waited and waited and she didn't turn up. As I was crouched there, I saw my old grey navy... Uh, my old grey... Nichols laying in the grass and before I even knew what I was doing I began shadow batting in the dimly lit street <laughs> I started out small with Mark Waresque flicks off the pads as time wore on the shots were becoming more and more extravagant I didn't notice the guitar on the side of the road and when playing a full-blooded cover drive I smashed the toe of the bat into the gutter I was like, gutter, gutter not guitar I smashed the toe of the bat into the gutter and broke the handle quite badly Anyway, should I buy a new bat in the Boxing Day sales or should I have a go at fixing it myself? It's a big decision. Help me out. Love the podcasts. Sorry for the lack of any ass TGC bingo and non. Um, <clears throat> I love the idea that he, he's, he's, just, he's just going through a tough trot there and known, isn't he? Like, he just can't take one trick. You know, his, mm. his girlfriend is cheating on him yep. and um, he just picks up his stick. Yeah, here we go. I'll mm. pass the time here. I'll yeah, play a few shots. I get, I get myself to 30 here. Yeah. Get myself a start. And he fucking cracks the toe onto the gutter. And then he would have had to do the thing where he had to like shake the handle to like hear any clicks, any yeah. clicking noises, because that's one of the worst things you can have, isn't it? Yes. Um, so should you buy a new bat? Yeah. Uh, retail therapy for sure. Yeah. And this is related to the next question, so I won't go right into it, but I'll explain it at the end of the next question. But yes, this is an occasion for a new bat because he needs a new life. Do you know what? Oh, that's what I was going to say because I'm young. 
He, need, he needs a new life. I don't want to go right into it, but like there are certain occasions when a bit of a you know, a bit of spring cleaning mm. needs to be replaced with a revolution. Yeah. You need to actually go, listen, it's time for change. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? Um, yeah. Because his girlfriend is cheating on him. Yeah. And um, you can tell things. The universe is telling him something as well. He breaks his bat. Things aren't, you know, like he's, the universe is saying to him, mate, things aren't right. The bat was placed there by, by our Lord and Savior, Savior Manus off bail. <laughs> In fact, he might have been at the altar. Yeah. That's what he was doing on his knees there yeah. at the Abbey of Conservatism. Um, but I agree. I, um, when I was 21, I uh, had a girlfriend and I was, um, I, was, I was infatuated with her. And she cheated on me. And then we got into like this really bad um, relationship where then I cheated on her, she cheated on me again. Like it was really like um, really dysfunctional, mm. emotionally toxic. draining, toxic. Yes, Cancerous. That's the worst. Yes, relationship. Mm. Very unhealthy. And I was really sad at the time because I was obviously I was so infatuated with her. And then I like had to like get out of the relationship. And so what and then at the same time, um, I was then twenty two and then I got the chance to play in the UK. And so I just I had to like leave. I had to like leave the entire country. That was the only way I could like get out. And then I went overseas and I played three years in the UK and it was like some of the best years of my life. So yeah, that was that's that's what he should do. He should actually move away. <laughs> he should run away from his problems and get a new stick. Make sure it's two nine. That feels like 210. Nice. Thanks, mate. <laughs> <laughs> Hope you're okay. <laughs> David Goodley. Pessimist and Rigos. Not sure if you've heard, but bats are pretty big these days. <clears throat> Ian Chappell certainly has. And by putting a dollar in a jar for every time he mentioned it during the Grandstand's coverage of the first three ODIs versus the Virat Coley's, I have saved a deposit for a tidy little three better. Having returned to grade park cricket this season, it was... It was with pride that I dusted off my old Puma original, good enough for Bevo, and still too good for me. As you 80s babies know, it's shaped like a Toblerone, <laughs> so that I have, I have to absolutely middle one to get it away to the boundary. After making a reasonable match winning contribution to a run chase two rounds back, a young teammate said, imagine if you had a decent bat. How's the guile on this juvenile peasant? <laughs> <laughs> He wasn't even alive when the Puma dispatched Roger Harper to the straight boundary at the SCG. I retorted, I'd make runs with chair leg. <laughs> I'd make runs with a chair leg, I'm sure. He, <laughs> he might have meant I make <laughs> runs with chair leg. <laughs> Everyone's just talking in shorthand now. I'd make runs with chair leg. My, pr <laughs> My problem is, whilst I have found the boundary on occasion, I haven't top edged any for six, and I certainly haven't mm. felt the urge to switch hit, not even once. My conundrum is this, having established myself as a viable run scorer with my retro and thus hipster wand, curiosity and vanity are drawing my mind batting towards a fresh one. I'm currently making vintage runs and a new bat would be a betrayal of my alternate image, the era that makes me feel safe and my own big mm. fucking mouth. Yep. On the other hand, a new bat might, might paper over my poor timing and therefore increasing my average. If I get... If I get a new rod, will it feel rod. like would it feel like the wrong kind of runs? When I close the face and watch a ball pitching on middle disappear over cover for four, will I feel dead inside? Will I imagine Ian Chappell shaking his head and muttering to himself? Will my teammates eviscerate me for breaking character when all change is incomprehensible? New stick or old? Thoughts? Goodsy. Wollongong. Beautiful question. Beautiful question, Goodsy. Uh, and a fine question as a well. A fine question, Goodsy. And obviously a self-reflecting character is obviously able to weigh up mm. what both might mean. I'm inclined, Goodsy, in this advice to advise you to stick with the old because cricket is identity more than anything else. Yeah. Uh, and when it comes to cricket, you can never change your identity. Mm. It's, it's stuck because you know what it is. You can try, but you can't do it. Like the guy who changes clubs and says he played twos and threes, he's a compulsive liar mm -hmm. who's got all those issues throughout, throughout the rest of his life. Mm. Changing clubs doesn't stop him being a compulsive liar mm. with issues. Mm. Or he, an arsonist. Ex if he was an arsonist, he'll remain one. A verbal arsonist. Bringing arson wherever he goes yes. verbally yes. to your club, saying he played ones and twos, but he didn't gets a game in possibles versus probables, yeah. shows himself to be the third grader that he is. That he is. And so that change hasn't helped him. It hasn't changed. His identity still remains. Yeah. 
Uh, this is where it connects to the other question above. He goes, mm. so Ali, was it, was it, it was, Dave, uh, was it Ali above? Anon, Anon. sorry. Anon. Anon was above. He needed wholesale change in his life. Mm. He needs wholesale change, mm -hmm. which is why he needs to go get a new stick mm -hmm. and the whole thing, mm -hmm. right? I think things are going well for David Goodley. Same. I think I, I think he's got an identity. It's carved out. They give him some shit for it or whatever. Yeah. He doesn't need to feel a top edge for six. That's no. that's 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 fraudulent. That's fraudulent. That's fraudulent. It's fraudulence. Mm. He, he needs to. He's actually doing a service to his community by retaining the Puma, the Miller mm. Champ and Hall, talking about Michael Bevan. He, the, the younger guys won't tell him it, but they actually they like it. Mm. They like what he's about, and he can score runs with it. Mm. Um, you know, sliding doors movie. Gwyneth mm -hmm. Paltrow, mm -hmm. you know, the bloke cheats on her and she has to change her life. She gets new hair and the hair looks good. Her new haircut looks good, right? Yeah. She's got a new stick, but it, the yeah. stick is her hair. <laughs> Just like Anon. Anon, yeah. Anon had the cheating happen. Yeah. We're not sure if it's the other, if, if Dave is living <laughs> the other life at the moment where it kind of slowly toxifies. Yeah. Um, he's been driving a non I don't think he needs. To, I don't think he needs a new haircut, and I don't think he needs a new stick. I think he needs to keep going with what he's. He doing. will average more runs if he gets a new stick. Now, what yeah. I thought was, you know, how Pez this year, Kookaburra, uh, they've released like their retro range. Yeah, like, retro so thing. Manus yeah, is batting shit. with the Ridgeback. Yeah, and Maxwell was using the Beast yeah. the other day. I saw um, Hazelwood this morning was using the yeah. the Ridgeback as well. Ponting's first first sort of iconic stick. Um, so that maybe that's an option, but it's, it feels a little bit. That also oh, feels a bit. You're saying as well. get the big bat, but put the old sticker on it. That's well, a nice midway to look at it. But the the old bat like gets its love, gets its idea from it being so thin and shit. I think it's the stickers. I'm a stickers guy. I'm a fucking magpie. So you're saying just get the big stick? No, you could buy a stick put, online. Uh, try and get the stick. Try and get the old stickers, and and maybe that's the way to go. Miller Champ and Hall's, but I mean, he can't claim to have a vintage bat if it's a fucking no, no, no. But but you he's know, not going to change. Doesn't say anything. It's still fraudulence. It is fraudulence, but that's that's a way to go about him saying because he he will he will average more with a new. It's stick. a good solution if he wants a top edge one for six, but it does have to deal with. He obviously seems to have problems with imagining Ian Chapel muttering about him while <laughs> he's, he's batting, stuff. which is not a problem. Oh yeah, Goodsy's got many stuff of us going on. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Goodsy hits one for Goodsy's imagine hitting one for four with a yeah. big bag of oh, fucking Ian Chapel's over there. <laughs> Man, if Ian Chapel's watching you play cricket, you're doing well. What would Ian Chappell say? I used um, I used Kookaburra my entire life, and then the uh, last bo last bat that I bought was a Grey Nix, and that's not my identity. I made a mistake. It was a great stick, probably the best bat yeah. I ever had. Yeah, but it wasn't. Yeah. it wasn't for me. I had exactly the same issue. I've talked about it too. I many made times a huge mistake. Yeah, I wasn't Grey Nickels. I just wasn't. I never will be. I and good I luck to, will be. And good luck to good those luck who to are. Them. Yeah, good luck to them. Yeah, good luck to those who are. Yeah, Sir so Alistair Cook. Well, this is a problem though, because we saw the other day that. Ajinkya Rahane, who's played one of the most important innings in India's cricket history. Yes, according, according to, to Sunil Gavaskar. Uh, according to no, no less than Sunil Gavaskar. He's got 10,000 test runs. Yeah. Name one innings. Yeah. Can't. You can't. Because of Tendulkar and Kohli, they're, they're, <laughs> they're, they're, they're the guys. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. before my time. Well, Ajinkya Rahane in this match uses a C-E-A-T -E bat. Now, I can't look at that sticker without seeing the word cheat or cunt. Or coat. <laughs> That's, that's again, that's my issue. That's not Rahane's issue. That's not Jinxie's issue. BAS gloves and SG pads. So he's got it's not even sponsored. misaligned, unaligned sponsorships. Yuck. Well, he's got he's sponsored, but he's got three different sponsors. It's mm. not the same. It's not symmetrical. And that's why India's winning this mm. series, by the way, because nothing that they do is symmetrical. Mm. Everything in Australia is about rhythm. It's lion, load and explode. Australia, worshipping at the off bail, mm. going through the chest. It's front dogging. Mm. India doesn't permit us to do any of these things. Boomer's a fucking human wanger <laughs> who swings it. He fucking goes outy, outy, innie, and the innie yeah. is the most fucking jagged, violent thing you've ever seen in your mm. life. <laughs> yeah. Rahane scoring hundreds with three separate fucking sponsorships. Yeah. They've they actually they've completely outfoxed us. They haven't got a rig based selection. They haven't got one rig based selection. Fuck. Fucking is... mate, this is the most frightening team I've ever seen. <laughs> Chapel was right. Greg, that is. <laughs> Fuck. What a way to wrap it up. Thank you for the questions this week. Um, Could India beat us at the Gabba? Oh, the Gabba Trois. Yeah, that's going to be. If India beats Australia at the Gabba, that's the end of Australian cricket. We have to finish it. That's it. That's That'll we have to end ashes. everything. We'll have Seriously, to burn the stumps. Yeah. Burn the stumps. Mm. What would be the new symbolic tone? Well, the off bail. It'd have to be the off bail. Yeah, I'd have to get the bail. The off bail. At one end. Mm. Vulture Street end. Mm. 
Mm. Well, India out bounces, it bounces out of Australia at the Gabba. Fuck. Oh shit. Jesus. That can't happen, mate. Well, judging on what's happened here at the MCG, yeah. Fuck. Could be lurching towards the end of Australian cricket. Like we've only got, two, we've only got two shows left then. Mm. <laughs> Starting our own century of humiliation. <laughs> um, Pez, can I say to wrap up the year that was? Yes. Depends what you're going to say. Yeah, I can just cut this out at the end. <laughs> um, but obviously 2020 for a lot of people has been a very hard year. And um, we, we've received it through DMs, email, those two mediums, mm. so many messages genuinely who have, who have like reached out saying they've had really hard years and like for whatever reason the show has helped them. And I will say – from a personal perspective, and I will speak on your behalf. No, that please that, do. That that means the absolute world. That means more than can I can put into words, obviously, because I don't, not, don't speak in words or I'm not a professional communicator. So um, to all those people who have or have not or have thought about it, I um, just want to say thank you so much for listening each week. And uh, this has been an unbelievably hard year for so many people. But um, the fact that we can um, speak to you for 90-odd minutes uh, one week uh, or a little bit longer if you're a Patreon subscriber as well, um, to get you through, that's uh, that's amazing. And it, uh, we'll never take that for granted. So thank you so much for doing so. Well said. Uh, and to flip it as well, I think that Fuck we have been... Blokes. Of course, yeah, <laughs> I was going to finish that way. But uh, <laughs> we've been massive beneficiaries from the listenership of people also. Yeah, you know, of course. It's been great to be able to help mm. people through tough times. But I think you and I, uh, you know, have gone through our own battles as well. And, uh, and having so many listeners and so many people willing to back us and enjoy it and tell us how much they're enjoying it means massive amounts to us. So thanks mm. to everyone who's let us know mm. um, that. So, um, Okay, well, we'll see the patrons on January 1, New Year's Day, 2021. Here we go. Can't get any worse. Walking in with a bowler, Australia. 